Amen. Can you imagine? One day, like an eagle, we'll take to the sky. And I'm thankful to know, as Brother Scott's already said, not only is he my friend, but he's my savior. He bought me. Therefore, I'm not of myself anymore. I belong to him. And I appreciate the good songs this morning. I, I, I'm bad to sit there and think about the songs as you're singing them. And, and I, I was thinking about when she sung that the flames of hell I'll never feel. I felt a lot of pain in this life. I've cut my thumb off. That was painful. I've had breaks and bruises and other things. They've been painful. But there's one pain that I'll never feel, feel is the burning flames of hell. And that's because, not because of me. Not because of anything that I could do. But it's because of everything that he's done for me. And I, I, aren't you glad you got a friend? <laughs> Hallelujah. Folks, well, we'd be in a mess without him today. We've got a friend that says he sticks closer than a brother. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He'd go with us even until the end. And I like what Brother Sammy was saying about, look what's in store for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I don't have hardly a whole lot here. But I've got a whole lot there. Probably, well, I know I've got more there than I do have here. I've got a mom and dad that I'm going to be able to see one day. I haven't got to see mom in over 20 years. I can still hear her voice. I haven't got to see my dad in over, it's been almost 12 years now. But I can still see his face and hear his voice. And I've got that. Folks, there's a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ today. There's not much hope in this world. Well, there's not any hope in this world. But I've got every hope that I'm going to see him. Who's him? That's the Lord Jesus Christ one day. I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And again, I was thinking about as Brother Sammy was singing about, look what's waiting for me. Folks, we have much more waiting for us in heaven than what we have here on earth. And as we're going through this walk of life, this thing, has, anybody, has life ever troubled anybody? Sometimes it gets a little troublesome, doesn't it? Sometimes it gets wearisome. I mean, sometimes it's, it's heavy upon us. But can I ask you a question? Even through all that, this thing called life. Are we content? Am I content? Are you content? Can I tell you, you can be. There's contentment today. It's the contentment that we find. It's not in, it's not in this world. It, and it's not in stuff. But it's only in the Lord Jesus Christ can we find contentment. And, and what is this thing of contentment that, we're, that we, we've heard about and, and we, we, we talk about and we, sometimes we even dream about being content. Oh, if I only had enough, then I'd be content. I've got some friends, and, and maybe some of y'all do too, that, that really when the stock market crashed, they really wasn't content anymore because their 401ks now no longer had what it had in it because the money's gone. I know one, one guy, he said, well, if I can get a million dollars, I'll be content. Well, he's got that, and now he's still not content. So what is this thing of contentment? What, what, is, what does it mean to be content? Well, it just means to be satisfied. It means to be completely sufficient. To, you know what it means? It means to absolutely not to need anything. Now, I want to be honest with you, folks. We always are going to need Christ Jesus. Whether we want to admit it or not, e even those that are lost. Why, why is it that there's so much discontentment in this world today? Can I say there's no God in their life? 
There's no godliness. And we'll see this here in just a minute. That, that Folks, if we're going to be content, it's only going to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. And a relationship through Him and by Him. It, it's salvation, Brother Scott, that brings contentment. And, and it's only through salvation. Folks, this world will not give you anything that's going to last for eternity. I guarantee you. But I'm going to tell you the Lord Jesus Christ can give you something that will last, that, that, that's even, that, that'll last even through the flames and all this, and it's called salvation. It's eternal life, and he gives it. He's, it's available today. So this thing of being content, it's, it, it's, it's not to need anything. It means to be fulfilled. Why do we have so many children and adults? Well, it's, it's adults, too, today that are always searching for something because they're not fulfilled. Can I say you can be fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ? He can fulfill, he can fulfill our needs. He can make us satisfied. He can make us complete. So Paul is writing here to Timothy, and he's telling Timothy here about how to be, you know, and it's not a pipe dream. It's not something that's not attainable to anybody. We all can be content today in the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us here in chapter number 6, in verse number uh, 6, he said, but, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So he's already telling us here, he, he's, he's giving us the answer to the question, how is it that we can be content? It's only through godliness. He, he gives us, you know, it's no big secret, by the way. It's not nothing that's hidden. It's not nothing that can't be found. But he says, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So he said this godliness. And again, we, we think about, uh, again, salvation and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that can bring content. You know, he, he can bring, con, bring contentment to the most discontented people. I think of the one whose name was Legion. I mean, he was tearing up stuff. He, he was, the people were afraid of him. They, they would bind him in fetters and chains, and they would tie him up, and he would break loose. They were scared of him. But you know, one day Jesus come by, and they saw this very same one that they were afraid of set him at the feet of Jesus. And how was he there? The Bible says he was in his right mind. How's, 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 that, how's that possible? It's only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and let me say today, if, if we're discontent, if I'm discontent, if, if there's things in our lives that are troubling us, uh, maybe it's, it's a problem with not the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's a problem with our relationship with him. How many of us sometimes ever felt like we can't find the Lord nowhere. Now, well, there have been so much trouble coming in our lives. There have been so many things happening, and, and it just seems, I, 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 maybe it's only me, but it seems like everything falls down around your feet, and it begins to pile up. Kind of like kudzu climbing up a tire pole. Can I say, he already told you, if you're one of his, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll go with you how far? He said, lo, always, even unto the end. So where's Jesus? Where's God and all these problems and all this trouble and all this sorrow we have? Can I say he never left you? Our problem is we leave him. Where do you find him? Go to the last place where you left him. That sounds so simple, but that's true. He said, just, you know, and while you're looking for him and you go to that last place, and there he is. You know what he's going to do? He's going to have his arms wide open, ready to receive you back. That's our Lord. That's my Savior. That's my, that's my friend. And he says, this contentment with godliness. And he said, is this godliness is, a, is an observance. It, it, it's a doing. Uh, it, it's not stagnant. It's, it's, you know, godliness, is, godliness can, I, can I just put it this way? It's not just coming to church and sitting on a pew. It's living a life. Before God, that's holy. 
Godliness is just not being able to come up and sing a song and, and bring a tear to her. That, that's not godliness. Godliness is a, is a close relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say godliness is obedience to God? Living a life of obedience. And he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. How many of you, when we were born, <laughs> how many of us was born with something? Well, every one of us was born the same way. Naked and not a thing. There was not, nothing to your name other than your name. We were born without anything. Now, I got bad news for you. When you die, you know what you want to take with you? The same thing you brought in with you. Nothing. So we got this thing of birth and this thing of death. They're basically the same. You've got nothing. So what have you got in between? There's where our problem is. There's where discontentment comes in. That thing in between birth, hey, I, I've never seen, well, I've seen babies that's not being very happy, but generally they're taken care of, right? And those that are dying, can, folks, can I, can, let me just say this. If you're a child of God and God's given you dying grace, there's nothing sweeter than a saint of God getting ready to go to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We ought not to pray to keep them here. We ought to pray to the Lord, go ahead and just take them home. I love what Paul said. Paul, Paul said it's far better to go on and be with him. But we've got this thing of, of discontentment, this, this thing here between, and, and that thing in between birth and, and death, it's called life. And we all have to deal with it, don't we? You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. It'd be, it'd be nice sometimes to be able to pull the cover up over your head and hide yourself from the problems, but they're still there. But can I say Jesus Christ? He says, I'll go with you. He's that friend. He said that content, we can be content even in the midst of our troubles, even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of heartache. God can give you and I a contented heart today. He's able. And he says here, we can't, folks, we come into this world with nothing. We're going to leave with nothing. So we've got a deal. What, what, what does man really need anyway? What is it that we, we really need anyway? We just need three basic things, right? Food, clothing, and shelter. Just three basic things. Now, I'm not saying having stuff. Is, no, I, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong when I, when I tell you this. It, there's nothing wrong with having things. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. But just don't let those things have you. And Paul is simply telling Timothy here, and he says, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. He said, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, into many... Now notice what he says here about uh, this thing here. Many foolish and hurtful lusts. Now notice what happens here. Which drown. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Then he says, for the love of money... He says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, no, let me rephrase. Yeah, the root of all evil, while, he said, which while some coveted after. In other words, desired. They, they, they see it. You can't get enough. You just, you got to have more. Which coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So we see here this thing of money, this thing of treasures, this thing of discontentment, not being satisfied, not being fulfilled, can lead us away from the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it can keep us from a lot of things here. And he said this, the, the love of money. Then you notice what he said there. And again, it's not money. You, you can pull money out of your pocket and out of your billfold, out of your purse, and money's pretty much inanimate, isn't it? The money can't do anything within itself. It can't, money, I, well, it may one day, but it can't yet. 
It can't go spend itself. You've got to do it. So you're either going to, money is, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't care. It, it can be used for good just as easy as it can be used for evil. That's money. And he didn't say money is bad in particular. He said it's not that. But he said it's that love of money, that desire of money, that, that not being satisfied with what we have is the root of all evil. Now what's the root? Now the root is just the beginning. The root is where everything grows from, isn't it? The root is where things begin to grow and things begin to uh, uh, grow up and blossom and, and begins to uh, produce. Now again, when we look at this root, what kind of fruit is that root going to produce? That love of money. But it's not going to produce good fruit. It won't produce that which is uh, seemly, it'd be that which is unseemly. And we see here this thing of uh, Paul is warning Timothy here about uh, this love of money, and he says it's, it's no secret. God, this contentment is no secret. He said it comes with godliness. But he says he'd be careful. He says this, this money here. You know, the secret of contentment, it's not money, by the way. Can I ask you another question? How much is enough? How much money is enough money? We can say, well, if I had this much in the bank, then I'd be happy. No, we'd want that much more in the bank. That's, we just want more. And Paul is telling Timothy here, he said, the money, the, this, this, again, folks, don't get me wrong. Thank God. Folks, does anybody here not need money? I like, well, maybe I don't like it, but I do it anyway. I like paying bills. Anybody here? We, we can only go so long and not paying bills or you'll be sitting in the dark. You won't be driving a car. Somebody else will. Don't pay your bills for a while. It may, now, and I know people say, thinking now, I know some people that's getting by with that. Trust me, they're really not getting by. But money, he says this thing of money here, he said it's, 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 it's ever, this mankind is always looking to have more. He's always wanting more. But I want to give you four things here real quick. What money will do. Well, not what money. For the love of money. If I had a, uh, again, uh, you ever, I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I struggle with a title. What do you give a title? Maybe a good title would be for the love of it. I don't know. But really, I guess a title would be, are we content? Are we content in our place where we are right now? In our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, folks, I, again, I, I want to say this. We should always desire a good relationship, not only with the Lord Jesus Christ, but with each other, shouldn't we? To be fulfilled, in other words. So this, this money, this love of money, what, what will it do to you and I? What will, and it does it to Christians as well as lost people. It does it, to, it does it to whomsoever it can get a hold of. Money, this love of money will enslave you and it will tempt you. It enslaves you and I and it tempts you and I. You know why? If you've got enough money, you can go anywhere you want. You can get on a plane, you can get on whatever. You can go anywhere you want, anytime you want for this love of money. You can do all these things, and, you, and this money here, what's it going to do? It's going to tempt you to do things you ought not to do. And that's what it does. And you know the rich sometimes, those that have plenty of money. Now, i, I got to tell you this, folks. You ought to be thanking God you live in the country that you live in right now. Even the poorest of us has got more than the riches in other countries. God has blessed this country. God has blessed this people. I, I know, folks, we barely get by, and I understand that. I understand it's hard. But I, I want you to know you've got more than a lot of other people do. And that, that's not by... But it's by the grace of God. 
But money, this love of money, it'll, 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 it'll tempt us, it'll enslave us. Have you ever noticed here, if we get that desire of money, we'll never be satisfied. We'll, we never get fully satisfied with this. We'll, what else? We'll never have true peace. Because we're always worried about making more. Making more. But yet, through the Lord Jesus Christ, He can give us a contentment. He can, he can give us peace and, and he, can, he can do things for us that money can't do. You know, there's a lot of things that money cannot do. And notice, I want you to notice verse number 9 again. He said, but they that will be rich fall into temptations and a snare. That's those, those things that tempt us and those, that's those, those things that traps us. But notice what he says. He says, and men into many foolish and hurtful lust. He said, if you've got enough money, you can do things that, again, you ought not to do. Those things that, those desires, those things that uh, ought not to come up. He says, it feeds those things. That, that, that money, it, it, it'll feed them. I want you to know, and folks, I know this by experience, and you do too, if we'd be honest. We've got to be careful with those things so they can get out of control. They can get out, it's easy to let them get out of control. So Jesus is just simply telling, or Paul is simply telling uh, Timothy here that it's the Lord Jesus that's going to give you contentment. It's the Lord Jesus that's going to give you uh, satisfaction. He said it's that money, that love of it, that, that desire. You know, not only the love of money, but can I say the love of fame, having your name, the love of a pat on the back. There, there's many things that could be related to here, that could be used here. But he says this money that's got a foolish and hurtful lust. A lot of people have been hurt over just a dollar. There's been a lot of people get mad over just a dollar. And all it is truly is, is money. We were to really put it kind of in perspective here. But don't you notice what else money does? He said in verse number 9, money drowns men in destruction and perdition. And again, that word drown means, uh, uh, means uh, being thrown into an ocean way over your head. You know, anybody here, that, that uh, submersible that went down looking for the Titanic, over two, two miles deep, imploded five people on board and they're wondering how they're going to get their bodies back they probably won't but what happened they were drowned they were drowned and they were they were in over their head in other words he said and that's what this love of money that's what this thing would do he said it it a it a drowned men in destruction and perdition he says uh, it's it's a folks uh, can i say this this, this love of or this jealousy, this desire, this covetousness, it's a green-eyed monster that wants to attack. It wants to destroy. Just as that sub was imploded, it was destroyed. And those that were therein were destroyed with it. The same thing with money. Sometimes things implode on us and it will destroy all that's in. So we see here, this, this thing Paul is just simply telling you and I, that, that this love of money, and he's telling us what it will drown us. But then he says here in verse number 10 again, he says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You know what the love of money will do? Again, that's what I'm talking about is being discontent, not having the contentment that we should have in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the love of money will make us covetousness. It'll make us covet other things. Oh, you look out in the parking lot, but don't, you don't have to do it now, but you can when you leave. But you can look out the parking lot and look at all these nice vehicles other people are driving, and you'll begin to want something like that. Desire that. And that's what this thing of, of money will do. It'll, it'll make us to covet. It'll, make us, uh, it'll put us in idolatry trying to earn more so we can have more. But he says, for the love of money, have you ever been told this? And I, I think of Matthew. He's a young man, just now getting started. 
Matthew, make all the money you can while you can. Now, can I ask you a question? Is that good advice? Absolutely not, Matthew. Don't do that. You know why? Because you'll be making money when you ought to be at home with your family. You'll be making money when you might be able to take your girlfriend on a date. You'll be making money when you should be worshiping God. You'll be making money when you should be spending time in the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. You'll be making money when you ought to be doing something else. Again, folks, I'm not saying money. It is important to us. We've got to have it. But we need to put things in perspective. We need to have a contented heart. We need to have that godliness, that living a life that's approved, that, that's, that's approved by the Lord Jesus Christ, that lives uh, in obedience to Him. This love of money, here's what it does. It, it calls you and I, it calls you and I to wander away from God. What do you mean? Again, we'll be, trying to make, we'll be trying to make more of it when we should be in the house of God worshiping Him. Again, I know some of us may have a job where we have to work on Sundays. I understand that. If you're a fire, and sometimes you may have to. But y'all don't have to work every Sunday or every Wednesday night or every Sunday night. Folks, money, money, here's what it do. Now, again, when I say that, please... Please put this phrase. I may not put it in front of it, but I want you to remember this. It's not money, but the love of money. It's the love of money that will steal your time and steal you away from other things that we ought to be doing. We'll be working, earning money when we could be working for God. He said, this love of money. And again, what, what does it come from? Where, where, is it, where does it begin? Where is the root of it? The root of it is that discontentment. But we need to be what? Con godliness with contentment is great gain, right? He says, this thing of money. He said, it causes people to what to do. He said, to pierce themselves through with many arrows. It causes a lot of problems, a lot of hurt, a lot of heartache. That's what it does. It, it calls you and I. It, it, it calls you and I to separate. Can money buy your health? Can money make you healthy? Well, you can go to the Book of Luke, chapter number. No, well, the Book of Matthew. Is it Matthew? The Book of Matthew and. Uh, I believe it might have been in the book of Luke as well. It, it talked about the, the woman with the issue of blood. She spent all trying to be healed. The doctors couldn't help her. Even the best at that time couldn't do nothing for her. What healed her? The Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. What it cost her? Not a thing. Then you've got that Wandering son. Can money buy you happiness? Can money make you, oh, oh, if you have a pocket full of money, and, and then again, you, you get to go, will it buy you happiness? No, you can ask that prodigal son out of, out of Luke 15. He went out with a pocket full of money. Come home broke. Desiring to eat after the swine. Keep buying your happiness. I, we're stationed at Fort Campbell. There's a, there's a young soldier there. And uh, every payday, every payday, this young soldier, they'd go to a local bar. And he'd come back, shores of the world. Every time he'd come back, and he'd have two black eyes. He'd have a busted lip. They beat him up. And they took his money. Because he'd put all of his money in his pocket. And he'd go to the bar. You see, that's just a picture of this world. This world don't care. They didn't care nothing for him. They just wanted his money. And that's this world. They don't care anything for you and I. They just want your money. I finally told him one day, I said, I said, listen. Why don't you just go buy 
throw your money out the window and keep driving and you won't get beat up. I said, you don't need to get beat up every, every, every payday. Don't do it. But see, that, that's that desire. He was, he was looking to be fulfilled. How was he looking to be fulfilled? He was thinking that bar, that alcohol, that environment was going to make him fulfilled, be, satisfy his need. Folks, can I tell you the only thing that's going to bring is destruction and death upon you and I? That's the only place that'll lead. There's nothing good. Folks, I want to tell you this, and you, you just put her, take her to the bank. Nothing good will happen in a bar. It's not a good place to be. So this thing of this thing of that love of money, and, and he's he, the, we're looking to be does, we're looking to be fulfilled. We're looking to be uh, satisfied. Can I say? I want to tell you this morning. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in stuff. Again, there's nothing wrong with having stuff. I like stuff, and I'm, everybody here likes to have things. There's nothing wrong with having nice clothes, are they? But y'all not to have a whole closet full that you never wear. That's kind of getting a little extravagant, isn't it? So we find this thing of this thing of contentment, this thing of uh, of money. That, folks, we need to have a good balance, don't we? We need to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and in Him, in Him, find our contentment. And we see here, it, it, it'll steal your money. It'll steal your time. It'll steal, folks. It, this this thing of the love of money, it'll steal your soul. Jesus said this. He said this in both Matthew and Luke. He said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, I want you to notice what he said here. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, now notice what he didn't say there. He didn't say, Well, you saints of God, where your prayers are, that's where your heart's going to be. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say where your worship is. That's where your heart's going to be. He said where your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. Now what is it that we treasure? Is it, is it the money? Is it the bank accounts, the 401k, stocks, retirement, all that stuff? Folks, I'm not, we need that. We've got to survive. We've got to live. I understand. But if we put more emphasis on that than our relationship with the Christ and our relationship one with another, our fellowship with other sisters and brothers of Christ, folks, that's where our treasure really should be, in the Lord Jesus and fellowship one with another. He said where our treasure is, in other words, what we desire, what we want, those things, what money, he said that's where our heart's going to be. We'll never be content if we're only physically, if we only meet our physical needs, we'll still never be content. And if we only met our spiritual needs and not physical, we'd never really be content. But it's only when we can get both our physical and our spiritual, when everything comes together and our relationship's right with the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got the godliness that we should have. He said contentment will come with that. Again, folks, we can have, you know, you can have a million dollars and still be saved. It's possible. It's true. Again, it's not having money. It's not having stuff. But it's not... It's not that, it's just letting all that control you, rather you controlling what you have. See, that's, what it, that's really what it comes down to. Who's in control? Who's in control? George Soros, the money man, or the Lord Jesus Christ? George Soros can't do a thing for you. Except maybe aggravate you. But the Lord Jesus Christ he can give you life and give you life eternal. He can give you a relationship. Folks, he can give you a relationship that will last forever. Our relationships here sometimes don't last very long. They don't last as long as we want. Sometimes they may last longer than we want. 
But with the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I'll give you something good. I'll give you something good. Have you been struggling? Have I been struggling? Have you struggled today? Have I, am I struggling with being content? Can I say this morning, there's contentment, and it can be found, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He can fulfill your every need. He can fulfill, folks, he, can I say there's happiness in the Lord Jesus? Not only happiness, there's more than happiness. Happiness is an emotion that only lasts for a little while. But he can give you joy. Yeah. He can give you joy. One of, them, one of those fruits of the Spirit, Brother Scott, he can give you peace. He can give you joy. He can give you a, a long suffering. He can get all these things, meekness, and all these things that Christ can do. He can do that today if you only come to him. Heather, would you come? David, would you stand? And I know you've heard this. It's what we do with Christ determines what Christ will do with you and I. It's what I do with him that determines whether I'm going to be content or not. Folks, the only way we'll ever be content, money's not going to do it, stuff won't do it, but the Lord Jesus Christ will. And if you need him this morning, if you want to speak to him this morning, I'd ask you, would you come? Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's a need this morning. Money won't meet that need, but Jesus can. Would you come?